our next guest. He is a legend in Philadelphia. I know he always doesn't like when I use that L word and call him a legend, but he wore number 83 for the Eagles, and he's Mr. Invincible himself, and that is the one and only Vince Papali. Vince, it's Zach Gelb and Chase Sr. here for the main event on Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. Thanks for joining us again, and how are you? Uh, great to be back with you guys. All pumped up. I was down at the link this morning doing something with Fox TV, and uh, just to be in that environment has got me all fired up. I can't imagine what the players are doing right now. And you're always uh, very busy in this Philadelphia area, and your uh, family, uh, you're also a family man as well. I know Gabby goes to Syracuse, and your son's a football player. So before we get talking a little Eagles and uh, Redskins, everything well with your family? Oh, it's all good. Yeah, Gabriella, Gabby is, uh, she's a Bishop Eustis grad now, sophomore at Syracuse in communications and cheering. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun for her, especially with the basketball with the ACC coming in and, and uh, Duke and Georgetown. I'm not Georgetown anymore, but Duke and some of the ACC powers. My son Vinny, uh, we had a big game tonight. Uh, he plays, he's a wide receiver, uh, defensive back for Bishop Eustis prep. And uh, tonight they have the first round of the playoffs against Camden Catholic, so uh, promises to be a fun night. So uh, the kids are great. My wife's great. I'm having a good time. Life is good. <laughs> and pumped about all the games. It's just going to be a phenomenal football weekend for us. Does Vinny wear number 83 like his old man? No. You know what we decided to do? Uh, you know, he caught a lot of heat with the invincible stuff. You know, guys coming up and getting in his face. And, hey, you're too invincible. You know, I mean, like, enough is enough. So, um, we, we decided to retire the number in the family. He, uh, he wears 13, uh, and, and ironically, it, it, you know, lucky 13 for me. It's the number I wore when I played semi-pro football uh, that led to somebody seeing me and eventually, uh, you know, wound up uh, playing with the Philadelphia Eagles. So 13 is a real lucky number that I have, as is 10. Uh, you know, hopefully the Eagles will break that tonight. 10 my uh, my high school number. So there's a lot of numbers. I'm a numerologist, so... Uh, it's all good. But Vinny's uh, number 13, and uh, Aaron has got some D1 schools looking at him. So we're real excited. All right, let's get to this Eagles game on Sunday. Uh, it's a clear task. they got to win this football game. It's a big task for Nick Foles, and they haven't won a home game since last September, late in that month, up against the New York football Giants. This is the biggest spot for Nick Foles, and uh, Vince, you really want to see how he responds in a big football game like this. Yeah, I think, uh, actually, I think Nick is going to do quite well. Um, I'm not convinced uh, after that game that he had had against the Cowboys that something wasn't wrong with him earlier in the game. And, uh, you know, they can say all they want, but uh, that, that's pretty much how I feel. And, and uh, it, it was just so much out of character, you know, for him not to be able to read the defenses and, and not to be definitive in all of his choices. Uh, and, and Nick is an extremely bright guy. Uh, as, as is Mike and, and as is anybody else that's out there, you know. Um, and, but he has a real good sense and a good control of the game. And, and, and the nice thing with, uh, with him, it just seems the guys are getting more open and, and uh, he's not forcing the ball in, uh, you know. And the, the Redskins, of course, uh, they're going to come at him and everything. And, you know, on the other side, they got RG3. Anything can happen. But, you know, you got to take the good with the bad. The, 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 the crowd's got to be pumped. Um, you know, you're playing for first place in the division. Uh, Redskins, they're looking at it saying, you know what, we started our run last year against the Eagles uh, in one of those games that they had here at the Fed. So uh, a lot of stuff going on, you know, which will provide uh, some, some good passion, and that's what the game's all about. It's all about passion. Hey, Vince, it's Chase Heener. Good to talk to you again. Last What's time, up, doing? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks for joining the show. Last time we Thank talked, you. if you would have told me that the Eagles would still be winless at home and that losing streak would extend to 10 games at Lincoln Financial Field, I probably would have said that you were crazy. It seems as though ever since they moved to the link, they've lost a little bit of that home field advantage from Veteran <laughs> Stadium. Uh, you had the opportunity to play at the Vet. The 700 level was crazy. The The stories from the fans are remarkable. You actually got to play there. What was that experience like playing at the Vet, and how crazy of an atmosphere was it? Well, it was, uh, it was pretty sick. You know, uh, actually, uh, and a lot of fun. And uh, at, at certain areas, you know, you're pretty close to the field. Uh, the thing about the vet, and I, and I think the intimidating factor with them is, aside from the fact you had to come in and everybody, you know, that you know, the first stadium to have the jail and the Philadelphia Eagles fans, which to me are the greatest and most passionate, knowledgeable fans in all of pro football. I love them, and I wouldn't trade them for anybody. I mean, I've had fears and things thrown at me in some places where I'm not going to mention the stadiums where. People think they're palaces, and, and, and they were a lot worse than some of the stuff I've seen through the fans at Veterans Stadium. 
and also the lake. But what, what I think what sets us, the bed apart is what sets the spectrum apart. And I talked about it this morning, this morning at the Fox. At Fox is just the intimidation factor, you know, and, and it seems uh, right now they, they just don't feel intimidated when they come in here like they used to when they went into the spectrum and played the Flyers and the Broad Street Boys or when they came and played us. And, and, and it wasn't so much the intimidation that they got from uh, maybe the, the, the fans or the players. It was the field. It, it was the atmosphere. It was the turf. Uh, you know, it was without a doubt one of the, the hardest and worst turfs in the NFL. And, and, and I took it, I did that feature with Fox and Shins Frederick this morning, and I took a piece of the vet turf down there, and we got to put a turf curse on the field, you know, with uh, with the skins coming in. And, and, and it was just a whole environment. And uh, and I, I think what happened when people, uh, when they were at the vet, it, they just sort of turned the the ugliness up just a notch or two, you know, and, uh, and things really didn't like coming in there. It, it was cold, uh, but it was ours. And, it, you know, people called it a dump. Me, it was my Taj Mahal. And I love playing there, and, and I would have loved to have played at the lake. I mean, it's just so flush and beautiful there. And so we have to get a vet mentality uh, to our fans at the lake, so I think that'll help. Ever since the Eagles went out to mile high and the Broncos put a 50 spot on the birds, that defensive unit under Billy Davis has really improved. And the last couple of weeks, they've been giving up less than 20 points, and they look to be playing together as a group. What have you seen from Billy Davis's unit? Because after that Broncos game, he, he preached to the media and the fans that you have to trust me. It takes a while for this scheme to get implemented and for it to be successful. That's the key word, word right there. It's exactly what I was thinking. They trust the defense. They trust each other now. You know, in those first couple of games, we're still going to have those games. But it happens in any defense out there where you have a defensive breakdown because there are so many audibles and what we call sight adjustments out on the field where you have to coordinate what's happening with the defense, with, with the quarterback as a wide receiver and also a running back. You know, and occasionally, that same thing now with the defense. You know, there's a lot of sight adjustments. Because they're moving guys around. And my God, you get against some of these great quarterbacks that, that uh, you, you know, especially a guy like Peyton, can just, he, he can just will the defense that he wants just by formation and structure. You know, what, what the, obviously the key right now is, um, you know, how they're playing. Uh, they're, they're playing more as a unit. Uh, they, they feel good about the system. And, uh, you know, they're getting some good play from guys that weren't expected to get good play. And they're getting good play from guys that were asked to step up, and they seem to be stepping up, you know. And, and safety with injuries and, and, and young guys in there uh, seemed that maybe that was going to be a big issue, but it doesn't seem to be as much this year now, you know. And, and they're growing as a unit, and they're doing a heck of a job stopping the run. And, uh, you know, the Skins come in with a damn good running game. And, and of course, uh, you know, if anything, I would, I would put a spy on RG3. But, you know, Billy knows what he's doing. I, 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 you know, I love the kid, man. I, I've known him since he was 10 years old as yeah. far as a coach. You know, uh, and so I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting hard for him. But uh, I think we'll come up with the answer. And, and you know what it is, guys? It's in anything that you're doing. Like, feel good about yourself and what you're doing. You're going to be successful. And, and and this defense right now is feeling real good about itself. And and, and the people around them, they're trusting each other. They're getting it. They're, they're, they're comfortable with the scheme now. And, and, and they're seeing it. And they're visualizing it. And, and I think that's going to be a huge, huge key. As well as special teams. Always great. Great special teams battles against the Redskins. Some classics that we used to have with those guys. And George Allen, you know, back in the day, he was a, he was a guru on special teams. So, you know, keep an eye on that. Henry's got to make the kicks that need to be made. Uh, but I think he'll be on that. He'll be fine on his own turf. Vince Papali joins us on the hotline right now. Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP. The Birds look for a home victory this weekend as they welcome in the Washington Redskins. And Vince, uh, this Washington Redskins offense, last time they faced the Eagles, it was week one. RG3 was coming back from that injury. Alfred Morris, he turned over the ball in that football game. Uh, But now as of late, I think they came off their best game of the season up against the Vikings last week. And Alfred Morris is really finding that groove. But how important is it that you win the turnover battle on Sunday like you were able to do in week one well that's important in any game you know and, and the coach will tell you the turnovers are the key i don't care what level of football you're playing in, especially in the nfl because you can't give up possessions and and, and so but the eagles which have been so great about them now and their defense and also their offense there, there's less turnovers now offensively and the plus minus radio ratio i don't know what it is but my gosh you know this 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 this, this, this this stage of the season when the defense had got um, many more turnovers and, and, and takeaways than they had last year. So 
Uh, that's so important. That's why the states, you know, penalties. I mean, you know, if, if they kill you, and, and eventually they come back to haunt you. So without a key, the, you know, one of the big things is turnovers. And, and they got to push. They got to put the pressure on IG3, man. He, he got pounded last week, and he continues to get pounded. And, and, and I love him, man. I tell you, this, this kid's got heart. And, and he's what a football player is all about, you know. But he's RG3 now from the Redskins, so I'm not going to love him too much this week. <laughs> and, and, and you know the Eagles are going to get physical with him, and, and guy's going to be flying all over the field. And you got to keep an eye on Garcon, man. This, this guy can make some plays, you know. And uh, they can get the ball downfield. A lot of stuff going on. It's going to be fun. Shifting back to the Eagles' offense, uh, D'Angelo Hall, who is a cornerback for the Redskins, uh, he's not at a, whole, a full percentage of health. He's been limited in practice this week, and this Eagles' offense has really taken it to new levels under Nick Foles. Uh, Riley Cooper has become a big threat. Deshaun Jackson is finding his way into the end zone, and uh, what you saw in week one was a lot of hurry-up, a high-tempo offense, and it really uh, tired out those Washington Redskins defenders, but since the Redskins already saw the Eagles once, they know what to expect. What adjustments do you think they can make, and Come out with a little bit of a stronger game plan up against this uh, lethal Eagles offensive attack. Well, yeah, obviously you got to figure they're going to be able to make the adjustments. The Eagles are playing right now at a little bit slower tempo, tempo, so that's going to be a, that, that, I, is that an advantage or disadvantage for the Redskins defense. I don't know. Uh, the thing is now is, is that uh, you know Lashawn is, is just really, really good about himself. Uh, Nick's feeling good about himself, and. Uh, you know, we've got quite an array of, uh, of wide receivers, you know, aside from the fact uh, that we, you know, we won that game in the Redskins Center, and I always I can't help myself by saying we. But, uh, you know, don't forget that, uh, you know, we, we had one of our, our top receivers who was gone with a blown out knee. And now, they're, you know, all of a sudden, uh, Riley's getting open. You know, Jackson's always a deep threat. And anything that sticks that hits 81's hands, uh, they're gone. I and mean, he's going to catch it. So, um, you know, uh, the, the, uh, Chip is it's just got a great football mind. He's extremely creative. And maybe the tempo might not be the same as it was, but he has a knack, just like uh, Peyton Manning does, of, of setting the offense and, and getting your motions and getting your formations to get the defense you want. You know, last week the Eagles maybe ran three or four running plays, but they did it with a zillion different formations and giving you a thousand different looks, but coming back with the meat and potatoes, and I expect they'll do the same thing too. Don't forget on the other side, you know, the offense has to make the adjustment as well. And that's a great thing about football. It's just a, it's a chess match with a lot of collisions. Vince, when Jeremy Macklin went down in the preseason with that torn ACL, a lot of questions uh, surrounded Riley Cooper and him vaulting up the depth chart to become the Eagles' number two wide receiver. First five weeks of the season, he tallied six catches for 93 yards and one touchdown. Being a number two wide receiver, th- that's pretty alarming. Since then, he's been terrific with Nick Foles under center. He has performances of 120 yards, 139, 139 yards, and 102 yards last week, and he's totaled seven touchdowns. Uh, how How is it that Riley Cooper, under Nick Foles, has suddenly been able to get open, whereas when Michael Vick was a quarterback, it seemed like Riley Cooper couldn't get a, a card's length of separation off his cornerback? You know, I don't think that has anything to do with who was a quarterback at that particular time. I think it's all about it's just the growth and maturity of Riley Cooper as a receiver and, and the respect that he has to gain from the defensive back out there. What you don't realize... And if you stood up next to the kid, he's 6'4", 225, 230 pounds. You know, watch him go downfield and, and punish defensive backs. And and, and that's sort of, I, I think, at this particular, that, that's a separating factor. You know, he's got the strength now to, to get off the line of scrimmage. Press coverage doesn't bother him all that much. And, and he shows that he's got a little bit of speed, you know. So I, I think it's as much of a confidence in himself and, and the fact that he knows he's out there, and, and if he makes a mistake, he's not going to get yanked uh, because, you know, he's got to be on the field because right now, you know, between him and Deshaun, I mean, with Deshaun, uh, you know, they're top receivers. But, again, it all comes down to, you know, we're talking about defense, trust and confidence. I think now that he has trust and confidence in himself, and, and impressionably, uh, Nick Foles has trust in him as well. And, and, again, it wasn't that Mike didn't have it. It was just that Riley was finding his, uh, finding his niche. And he found it. You know, uh, Jason's always had it. You know, he's one of the greatest route runners there is in the game. Uh, he, he's a technician. He, he, I mean, he's like Wes Welker. Uh, you know, and everything that hits his hands, as you know, he catches. And uh, and, and Deshaun, you know, he, he's the flash, man. And uh, he's a sizzle out there. And he's not going to give you a lot physically, uh, but he's going to give you that deep threat. And, and, you know, it's all working in constant 
and combination. And don't you think, again, you got to give the coach credit uh, without taking a look at some of the strengths of Riley or the strengths of the receivers, that the weaknesses of the defenses, and, and it's all seeming to gel a little bit now. So uh, everybody gets credit for that one. Final one here right before we let Vince Papali go. I know you went to St. Joe's, but you always root for the Temple Owls as well in basketball, unless they play Syracuse or even St. Joe's as well. But they play uh, Temple St. Joe's on uh, December 4th at the Leah Corps Center. You're going to be making the trip down here to North Broad? Well, I'm going to try to get down there. Uh, you know, your coach and I, uh, we, we, we have a pass. We go all the way back to when I was playing with the Eagles. So, uh, you know, I, I love Temple, and I love Temple basketball, Temple football. Your man, Harry Dunahue, uh, he, he and I were play by play buddies. buddies. Uh, he's a hot brother, too. So uh, a lot of Temple connections. Uh, the, the sad thing is they told me I wasn't a good enough athlete to go there. So uh, that's why I went to St. Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really wanted to go to Temple in the worst way, but they, they, yeah, one of the coaches said, you know what, son, you, you just don't have what we think it takes. And uh uh, you know, it's, it's always great to get to last laugh, but I still root for you guys. Well, good luck on big game, big game tomorrow, man. That, that's that's going to be uh, that, that's going to be a tough one. But hey, you know, you're home and get a big crowd down there. It's going to be a gorgeous day. We'll see what happens. No doubt about it. Well, Vince, we'll never reject you here at Temple. We'll always like to welcome you on the show. We appreciate a few minutes a day, and best of luck. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Uh, for sure. Okay, guys. Thanks very much. Go Eagles. Go Owls. Love you guys. Vince Papali right there on the hotline, Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP, 215-204-9449 is the number if you want to call and hang with us. we got to take a quick break, and when we get back, it's time for some NFL picks on Philly's number one college radio station, WHIP.